Hello and welcome on back to another Tormentale video. In this one, we're going to look at the brand new TMNT, the Mutant Nation, issue number 2. And, oh no, yep, this issue is going down the same path as the last issue. And, I was expecting some decent things for this series, but we already started off to a bad start with Metalhead and... Going into this one, I can't say it's going to get any better, just because they are recapping events from the previous ongoing series, so not off to a great start, so yeah, let's get into this one. Um, okay, so with the first page, we just get to see Raph, he's in Area 51, he's punching all the uh, EPF guards, and um, I must admit it's quite weird, just because with the last... Like, uh, issue um, they left off with like Raph talking to Metalhead about what's gonna happen if is Raph's gonna like join up with Metalhead or anything like that and I must admit it's kind, kind of I mean it's quite cool to see him like fighting all the EPF and in a daytime setting that's really cool but to see Lee like this and the first thing would be like oh you're probably wondering how I got it I mean mm, not the best start to this one, but okay. So then we do go over to the next page where we do get to see Rap. He's punching a lot more guards and all that kind of stuff. And I must admit, it is, again, it's really cool to see all this kind of stuff because it's giving me like kind of vibes of uh, Good Genes Part 1 where the Tolls were breaking into Area 51. This, I mean, it's really cool for all that kind of aspects and I really do enjoy all the fighting. But I, I don't know, something about it just. A little bit off, I want to say, but we do get to see him continue on fighting all the guards and all that kind of stuff. And he continues uh, talking about the f uh, about how all things led up to this, uh, saying that basically with the story, you just got to laugh because basically, if you don't laugh at it, then it's going to be crying about the whole thing. But he just goes into a bunker where he gets uh, greeted by some more guards who are pointing their guns, and that's when he continues fighting the like guards in the uh, bunker. You know, this time now doing more shooting, and it is cool. I mean, I I was so wanted to like dislike it and hate it, but uh, mm. but yeah. So in this bit here, we do get to see him just talking about how it's supposed to be in Vegas. However, because of everything that went down, he can't be there. So now he's going to be doing everything for himself and all that kind of stuff. And then the weird part, which I, I must admit I do find to be quite weird, is because that goes over to a truck, but at first I thought it was a, a, a tank. He pulls out a little smoke bomb, which I was thinking it was a smoke bomb, just because it looks like a smoke bomb. However, when you do actually uh, like read on a little bit further, it turns out that it's a bomb. Uh, why was he carrying around a bomb? I mean, with the amount of like, stuff that happens to him, the amount of time he gets thrown into walls, to the floor, or falls down, or anything like that, I am surprised this has not gone off yet, and I doubt that this was a recent addition, but I'm just so confused at how he got this, why he's been holding it in all this time and that kind of stuff, uh, but, yeah, just, oh, I, I, I can't even with this. Um, so, yeah, and then for the next page, we're going to see Rav, He's busting out of uh, the bunker area with the truck, and there's not really too much to this page, but it's cool to see Raph doing some more damage, just because, and, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, why not? Uh, but it does look coolish. So then let's move to go over to the final page, and I'd say that this is possibly the most disappointing uh, page, and... It's probably the most disappointing aspects of this issue and probably a series where they're going back to like old stuff from the from like this universe and like setting things up and explaining stuff to the audience who already knows about this. And I know that this is supposed to be like a like a good jumping on point for Tell fans to jump into this universe, but at the same time, I feel like with this kind of book. It's kind of like, these one, like one of these ones where it explains and helps a lot of stuff for this universe going forward and also just like ties up loose ends within this universe, which I think is really great. But when you're looking at stuff like this where it just goes on to explain how Metalhead became how he is, which I don't think is bad because it maybe sometimes is quite good to have a refresher, but I feel like with this kind of like series is one which is just expanding the story, not trying to bring new like readers in. And I'm just so confused by this because he goes on to explain the whole thing, which I just don't know why. Because most people who are reading this series have already read like, all the stuff in the ongoing series and stuff like that. So I'm heavily confused as to why they think it's necessary to like, recap everything from this one. And especially with it being Metalhead. I mean, just 
why, but... Uh, I want to say more p positive things, but I just can't. So, yeah. Okay, so let's look at the description for this issue, and it is a surprisingly long one. Okay, so... For the description for this one, it is assist an old enemy in breaking in, in into a highly resist, uh, restricted, heavily guarded, famously classified government facility. It's not exactly a free willing road trip Raphael had in mind, but when pepperoni life is in the balance, he's driving in head first. Um, it's a point of no return as Raphael uh, Mel Head uh, breached over 51. Uh, surrounded by EPF's uh, controverted technology, no head mot uh, motives come to light. He will stop at nothing to commandeer the secrets of his dimension. Time is running out for Raph and, uh, to find Pepperoni and use his strength for good, but a cunning plan is off the table when old friends call out for help. Uh, so, yeah, and then they'll also they'll go on to explain a little bit of the uh, last um, part of the, um, like the backup story, uh, and that little description is. Uh, is uh, then in Eric Burns and Mateo Santoloco's uh, heart pounding backup story, uh, Casey Jones endures Karai's grueling test of loyalty and a running with being rock steady uh, gives him an idea. So, yeah, uh, okay, so let's talk about the backup story a bit first. It's, it's kind of cool, but again, we already know the outcome of all this because of issue 5, Casey's going to be the main focus of that issue dealing with the government, I think he's supposed to be dealing with. So, a lot of stuff in that backstory is going to be possibly spoilt and reveal, uh, like ruined in a way in terms of like we really know how things are going to play out so all stakes in this issue or this, this part of the story are just gone but I'm quite interested to see what Casey's like running with Binrock study is going to be so that could be quite interesting um, so then for the the main stuff I'm not too sure what to really say of it so with the like the friends, I'm not too sure who it could be because I'd say that it possibly could be like old Mutanimal members, just because in for issue three of the series we've got them on the cover, so it could be them. And then also the whole stuff of Raph and Metalhead going to Pe uh, Area 51, uh, it sounds cool and it should be cool, but the sign about it is just not for some reason. I can't explain why. Um, so yeah, so for the covers, we've got cover A, which done by Javier Fernandez, and this one we do get to see Raph, he's, uh, no, Casey, he's uh, beating up uh, some random guy, I'm not too sure who he is, actually, I think it's actually a woman, uh, so, uh, yeah, okay, <laughs> uh, was not expecting that, um, and really, Casey, what was, that, what was that a man, I can't, I can't, I think, no, definitely, is that a man? Yeah, I think that's a man, actually, either way, he's punching someone, so... That's kind of cool, I want to say. I mean, it's great to see Casey going back to more of his more violent roots, which is cool. Uh, yeah, and then also still doing the ugly like thing of like trying to promote the other story with a circle in the character's face. I still don't like that, and I hope they do change that soon because it just looks really ugly on the covers. Uh, so then for cover B, which is done by Vincent uh, Frederick, who's doing the artwork for this issue, we get to see Raph trying to break into Area 51, but to punch up some guards. Meanwhile, Casey, I'm not too sure what ha is happening to him. I think he's getting hit in the face by a staff. Um, so, yeah, I'm not too sure he's getting trained by so uh, It says that he trains with the Foot Clan. So, yeah. I mean, that could be quite cool, seeing Casey with all, uh, like, you know, train ninja like like being trained as a ninja. And I've got to see that in Trust and Free Show, so that'd be quite cool to see him bring that over again. And then uh, finally we've got Mateo Santoloco's uh, co which, which is the one ten variant. And this one we would get to see uh, KC fighting Natsu the cry in the background. I do really like the a lot I really do like this one just because of the artwork, the the you know the KC and uh, fighting and Natsu this one's a really great cover, but again, it has the ugly thing with the wrap at the bottom. So, I think that's the only, the only bad thing about this one, but I'd say that overall, this one, like, I'd say that out of all the three covers, this one is the only one that generally gets me excited for the series. So, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let me know in the comment section below what you think about this issue. Are you looking forward to it? Are you not? And, uh, yeah, uh, that's going for today, guys. If you please share the subscribe and stuff. Goodbye, yo. Bye. Uh.